In the 19th century, a lot of inventions were created, and that was all thanks to the Industrial Revolution. One of these inventions were different types of engines. The steam engine, the petrol engine, the diesel engine, and even the electric motor, which is now highly developed and advanced. All these engines we just told you about were all invented in the 19th century. But we have a very interesting and advanced engine that's the only one that's invented in the 20th century, the Wankel or rotary engine. If you've seen our video, how petrol engines work, you're very familiar on how a piston engine works. But a rotary engine is completely different from a piston engine. The cylinder of a piston engine and the head which has the valves are all the same package as this rotor you're seeing right here. A system that's a triangle. You might say, what the hell is this? How does this even work? But it's because of this that a rotary engine is much smaller, much lighter, and it's also simpler. All this is what makes the Wankel engine good. Before we get too into it, let's learn the history of this engine. Just like we said, it was invented in the 20th century, exactly the year 1954, when a German engineer, Felix Wankel, invents the rotary engine, or should I say the Wankel engine. Wankel would say that the Wankel engine is far more economical than any piston engine. And it was true in some sense. It was cheaper to produce. It took a lot less space. It was lighter and some other positives. But anyways, how does this engine, the rotary, work? This triangle Dorito looking thing you see in the middle of this housing is called a rotor. In the center of the rotor, there is a gear system where the rotor spins around it. When the rotor spins, it also spins the output shaft. But the crankshaft looking thing in the middle of it is called the eccentric output shaft. And just like a normal engine where the crank connects to the transmission, this shaft connects to the transmission as well. Since we got an understanding about the simple stuff, let's take a closer look on how the engine runs. Just like we said, the rotor is put inside a housing of some sorts. You can compare this housing to a cylinder of a piston engine. On the housing, you have two holes, the inlet or the intake, and the exhaust. When the rotor passes the inlet port, it creates a vacuum inside that area. So therefore, it gets filled up with air and it gets filled up quickly. So it's sucking air in rather than replacing. And the more the rotor moves forward, the more air is inside the housing. While the air is being sucked in, the injectors have sprayed fuel and inside that vacuum, there is now fuel and air. When the inlet closes and the air gets closer and closer to the combustion area, it's getting extremely compressed with the fuel. So once it gets to the area where the spark plug is, it causes an explosion Another thing is that there could be one spark plug or two spark plugs. When the explosion happens, it pushes the rotor forward with extreme force and it creates an explosion with exhaust gas. So when the rotor moves forward, it also takes the exhaust gas and pushes it out the exhaust port. This process continues and continues and the rotary engine continues to run. Usually the most common way you see rotaries is two rotors next to each other. Like the 13B in the most famous rotary car, the RX-7. You could consider the 13B engine as a two cylinder because it has two rotors. But it's still a stupid comparison because you really can't compare them in that way. The engineering of this amazing engine is extremely interesting to watch. Like for example, while the exhaust gas is exiting the housing, it's already sucking in air something you don't see in any other engine. The way the rotor spins in the housing causes it to run more smoothly than any piston engine. But that's as long as it's running correctly. If you have a broken down rotary engine, obviously it's gonna shake around because it's not running correctly. Of course, no design is perfect. So the Wankel engine has its own problem. When you look at the Wankel engine spinning inside the housing, 
you see the tips of the triangle or rotor hit the housing. That's why there has to be oil inside the engine. But you can't put too much oil where it burns it and the car doesn't run correctly and it just burns oil. And that's why they came up with the genius idea of apex seals. An apex seal is a ceramic type material that gets put on the tip of each side of the rotor, meaning the triangle tips, and it prevents metal to metal action. Just like we said, the most famous rotary car is the Mazda RX-7, and it also has the two rotor engine, the 13B. In the 90s, Mazda came out with a luxurious car called the Mazda Yunos Cosmo. This one had a three rotor option, the 20B. You could say this was revolutionary, at least now it is. Because it's a rotary engine that has so much potential, it's insane. By now you probably realize that the Wankel or rotary engine is a type of engine where you can keep adding rotors to the engine and it will accept it as long as you do it correctly. You can start off with the one rotor, two rotor, three rotor, four rotor, five rotor, and six rotor. You can go even more, but that's a little too crazy. The most insane rotary engine is probably on this car, the Mazda 787B, which is a race car. The 787B participated in the 1991 Le Mans and won it. And at least at that time, the Le Mans was much more important than today. So it made a huge impact on the Mazda brand. After Mazda won Le Mans, it made the rotary engine and the 787B very famous. And that was mostly because of how insane it sounded. What do you guys think about this sound? Some say it screams too much, but most people believe that it's the most beautiful sounding engine in the world. The rotary engine is very compact. It doesn't weigh a lot. It's pretty simple compared to other engines, but we didn't mention the most important thing, and that is it makes an insane amount of power for the little package it is. For example, the 787B is technically a 2.6 liter four rotor, but that has the ability of producing 900 horsepower, even though it raced with 700. And that's in a 24 hour Le Mans race, where reliability is extremely important. Reliability is very important in Le Mans, so it has to last for a very long time at peak performance. When they added the Winkle engine to the RX-7 and later on RX-8, a lot of people complained that these are unreliable cars and they hated it because they didn't know how the engine works and how you have to take care of it. You could say it was logical because the rotary is not really meant for the normal Joe. This is more of a race engine than a normal engine like a Corolla where you can drive it normally for most of its life. The Winkle does not deserve to be in a car where you normally daily drive it. A rotary or Wankel engine wants to be driven like this. So now we realize that the Wankel engine is not made for normal cars, but it's beautiful when it's used as a performance engine or a race engine. Before we finish the video, I just have one favor. Please comment which one sounds the best. The two rotor. The three rotor. And the four rotor. <laughs>